This question, I, I like to think of questions sometimes like a river, right? Some rivers are really wide, but they're only an inch deep. They just take you a lot of time. Other questions, they're only, you know, a couple meters across, but they're super deep and you're like, I don't even know how to get through this question. This question is a mile wide, okay? It's the use of the same skill basically quite repetitively. And if you can sort of see through how intimidating the question is and just start to chip away at it, it's not that complicated at all. I want to point out a skill which I demonstrated up here, which kind of ends up being the key skill here. Do you notice I wrote this as 49 to the half rather than the square root of 49, even though they are the same thing. When I'm dealing with logs, why is 49 to the power of a half? Why is that instrumentally more useful to me? Because I can see the power very clearly, right? We use square roots all the time, so that's why it, it earns its own form of notation. But when you're dealing with logs, the thing you're actually looking for is the power, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna write every number I possibly can in terms of a power rather than in terms of square roots or even in terms of a number like 243. That's a number raised to a power, right? So let's start to chip away at this. If you have a look at this three, the cube root of three, I'm gonna start from the deepest part, right? How would I write that as a power? That's three to the power of a third, right? So I'm just gonna write that in here. Now, that is being multiplied by something. What's it being multiplied by? So uh, there, are, there are more square roots to go. I just wanna focus on this little number. So this 81 here is a power of three, isn't it? You can think about this in terms of like, that's nine squared, which is three squared squared. So therefore, it's three to the four. Do you agree? So those two things are being multiplied together, but then both of them have a square root applied to them. So what power should I put there? Uh -huh. Now that square root is being multiplied by this thing. Well, this thing is just three times bigger than that, so what power of three will that be? It'll be three to the five, right? It's one bigger. And then all of that is also, <coughs> excuse me, having a square root taken out of it. So far, so good? Log base three of that, okay? Then you look at the denominator. Same kind of deal. You have a look and you see, okay, where can I take powers out of this that'll be useful? I've got log base two of, what's 64? That's two to the power of six, two to the power of six. So familiarity comes with dealing with these questions a lot, which is why the practice ends up being so important. You've got two to the power of six here, but they've taken the fourth root of that number. So what power is that raising it to? A quarter, right? By the time you get to this last term on the denominator, they were trying to give you a bit of a hand. And they're like, okay, we'll give you the power on this one. We won't expect you to recognize what five to the power of negative 10 is. So seeing that's already in power, uh, power form, what do I do with it? You can bring it out the front of, and make it the coefficient. So that's minus 10. Do you agree? Log five to the five. Are you okay with that? <coughs> From here, it's just a bit of number crunching, really. So uh, for example, if you have a look at the denominator down here, uh, two to the power of six to the power of a quarter. What's that gonna be? Two to the power of six on four, which is two to the power of three on two. Do you agree? And we've just taken log base two of that. You can see where this is gonna go. Have a look at this. What's this log base five of five gonna be? One. So I just get that. And then up here, I, I just have to do some crunching, okay? So what are we gonna have here? Um, I, can, I can bring that half out the front. Uh, I can bring that half also. Oh, no, I can't, that's not applied to the whole thing. Um, I should probably start from the inside. So this is four and a third. So what do you do when you multiply numbers at the same base? You add their powers, right? So what's that gonna be? Four, four and a third is 13 thirds. That's three to the power of 13 thirds. That thing has had a half applied to it, which has been multiplied by before. That's, have I done that right? No, it's a five, that's a five. I've already done the four, haven't I? That thing has had a power of a half applied to it. And I'm just sort of gonna keep climbing down, right? Uh, what am I up to now? When you raise a power to a power, you don't add the powers, what do you do? You multiply them, right? So um, in there, you're going to have what? Three to the power of 
Uh, 13 on 6? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, that's been multiplied by 3 to the 5, and that's had a half taken out of it. What have I got on the bottom? That's 3 on 2, take away 10. Do you want me to keep, do you see what I mean by, this is a long question. So you're using the same skills over and over again, so that's not what makes it hard. You just have to have patience and be accurate with your manipulations. Do you want to know what the answer is at the bottom? Yeah? Once you finish, let's have a look. Once you finish, you'll get this. So maybe on your own book you may want to jot that down to see if you end up finishing out this question and landing up there.